this week a crucial report will fuel the crisis over the fate of Britain's pits. At the 11th hour, three coal workers turn television reporter. Their task, to quiz coal experts. To gauge public support. And to tackle Michael Heseltine, to discover if they can survive the great mining disaster. World in Action's investigators travel around Britain to ask if the government's view is right. I'm Nevin Morris. I work at the Point of Air Colliery in North Wales. And I really want to know why my colliery is under threat of closure. My name's Andrew Butler. Yeah. Yeah. Nevin Morris, a miner at the Point of Air Colliery on the Welsh coast near Prestatyn. Nevin's pit is on the government's closure list and is due to shut in two months' time. Some pits might now be reprieved, but Nevin is worried Point of Air might not be among them. How would this affect your family? Well, it'd be devastating, really. I mean, you know, I've got a, a wife and a, and a small baby and we've got a mortgage. Now, uh, all these things are still going to be paid and how we do it is, it is another thing. We've been overwhelmed, really, by the reaction of uh, ordinary people in the town to the, uh, the announcement by British Coal that they plan to close the colliery. The colliery banned. Its fate highlights the possible effect the pit's closure could have on the community. If the pit goes, the ban goes too. Point of Air is the last pit left in North Wales. Its closure would devastate the town's economy. Well, the amount of money that uh, it, it comes into the local community is something in the region of £11 million pounds a year. So just from them figures alone, obviously, it's going to have an impact. I've been at the Point of Air colony now for 17 years. I started straight from school. I followed my father into the colliery. He was, uh, he was there for 40 years. My grandfather was down there for 50 years, and his father before him. Nevin Morris is one of Britain's most highly skilled workers. British coal sent him to America to learn mining techniques, which many think are the way forward for British pits. Now, everybody is under the impression that the colliery is doing well and asking questions, why is it, is it closing? And really, I can't really answer them because what they're saying is quite correct. This is the equipment Nevin learned about in America. It's called a continuous mining machine. It's fast, efficient and cheap. The tunnel roof itself is no longer supported by expensive pit props, but by bolts driven into the rock. In this particular place now, the mining machine, the actual cutting machine, has been in here and cut out, and that machine has then been withdrawn and is now produced in another place, hence the continuous mining system. This roof bolted machine now has come in here and it will actually support the open ground that that mine is cut out. So it never stops. It never stops. And th does that make this system any more productive than what you were doing before? Well, it's not the stuff really, in terms of cost. So the system now it makes the pit much more economical. Oh, definitely. I mean, this, this has got to be the way forward for the pit. British Coal has halted the installation of two more continuous mining machines, which would make the pit's coal even cheaper. But British Coal's confidential production figures for Point of Air show it can produce coal as cheaply as foreign competitors. The figures angered Nevin. If, if these are the costs that we're working to, then there's no reason whatsoever that why Point of Air can't, can't be kept open. Would you have any idea about why British Coal would not want those figures released? Well, place? I think that they're trying to uh, have a, an economic argument. And for, if these figures are released, and I'm reading them now, the argument has been lost. Newcastle upon Tyne. Nevin Morris has come from Wales to show the figures to energy expert Ian Fells. He wants to know if the government's review of pit closures 
offers any genuine hope for point of air. I think that without this row over the sudden uh, announcement of, of pit closures, I think that the pits would just have been closed down steadily and slowly, as they are being done, as it's being done in Germany at the moment. What do you think the future holds for point of air colliery? The results that you that you've achieved in, in the last 12 months, I, I think are remarkably good. And, and they're doing the sort of thing we've been talking about, that is using continuous mining techniques. And brought, you brought the price of coal, or rather what it's costing you to produce it, down to world prices, or very close. So I would have thought uh, that the future looks good, particularly as I, I know that you have large reserves of coal, which would be particularly amenable to, to mining with this new technique. So provided people make some sensible decisions, I would have thought that the future is quite good for point of air. We wanted our three angry men to meet the chairman of British Coal to put points like this directly to him. The chairman agreed to give the interview to World in Action, rather than the miners. We asked him first about point of air. We've seen the production figures for, for point of air, and they tell us that it's producing coal well within the kind of world price level of producing coal, and if, if there were more new machines were put in, it could produce coal even more cheaply. This looks like a pit that could compete with any pit in the world. Mm -hmm. Well, if I may say so, you are not mining engineers. No, We've talked to quite a few, though. You may have done so, nor are you the managers of British Coal. British Coal has made a professional managerial assessment of the future of each of the collieries, and with great uh, care produced the ranking order which he thinks uh, the collieries should take. And that is our very careful judgment made after a great deal of investigation. So you must leave it at that. But our miners did not leave it at that. Nevin wanted to know why Britain is importing foreign coal despite spending millions of pounds on technology and training. Why do you think that British Coal have announced that they want to close Point of Air Colliery? Well, British Coal had to close under its original plan and under the with the government's approval had to close a whole stack of collieries and I think the decisions on a lot of the pits were fairly arbitrary. So eventually it was just numbers and because of the new terminal that's been built up in Liverpool to import coal from uh, all over the world from Colombia and Australia, they just hadn't got a market for the coal when they decided to go for point of air. Our miners wanted to speak to the man who made the final decision, Michael Hesseltine. He declined, undaunted, Nevin Morris set out for London. Well, I have made a, a formal request to meet Michael Hesseltine, and that was turned down. But I've come down anyway, because I really need to know what, what in fact is happening with the PIF closure programme at the moment. One, one minute we, uh, we're staying open, next minute we're closing. We really need to know. The Welsh miner waited patiently outside the minister's Belgravia home. Would Mr Hesseltine speak to him? I'm from Point of Air Colliery. Can you tell me why, Mr. Hesseltine, you're shutting down our pit when we can sell all the coal we produce? No, we have a review of this. Is the review going to be a fair review? Mr. Hesseltine, hardly stopped to talk to you. How do you feel about what you found out this morning? Well, I'm very disappointed, really. I've made the effort to come down and speak to him, and uh, really, he's ignored me. He doesn't want to know. Yeah. Talk about it. We are very successful at finding the markets. And that's the situation that we fought for every market that we can command. And we've done very well in that. We get new orders. You saw a new one in Scotland from an industrial consumer only last week. That's a measure of how hard we fight to get every available market. But the market people we've talked to have suggested is that some of these decisions were rushed, they were last minute, and they were even arbitrary. Mm. Well, they would be wrong, I'm afraid. What we did was to make the most professional assessment of the future of each colliery primarily against the questions of its reserves, the cost at which it had produced, the cost at which it could produce, the markets which it could supply. And we decided, uh, with a lot of regret, I may say, but we decided that some collieries inevitably had to close. When the closure program was announced last October, 40,000 miners worked in Britain's pits. Since then, 6,000 have opted for redundancy, but many may now find their pits do not close. A lot of them, uh, 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 the closure program was announced last October. 40,000 miners worked in Britain's pits. Since then, 6,000 have opted for redundancy. But many may now find their pits do not close. 
a lot of them are, are, are very angry at the fact that they've gone out of the industry and that there is a reprieve for the colliery because what they've found is that there is no jobs outside the industry and they've found out that the money is not all that they were promised it would to be. So the irony is that even if, even if a particular colliery is reprieved and it stays open now because of the government review, is that a lot of the men who work there have actually lost their job anyway. That's right. Some thousand men already in Nottingham should have lost their job irrespective of the review. What would you say to the miners who have now already decided to take redundancy and therefore their working lives are over, but yet they may discover that their pits in fact remain open? Well, the decision was theirs because the redundancy was of course on a voluntary basis. Um, there's been no compulsory redundancy and those miners who've taken the terms have done so on their own, on their own decision. Well, they wouldn't have made that decision unless British Coal had told them their pit was going to close. No, we have been closing collieries for many years. Um, whether we like it or not, and I don't like closing collieries, we have been forced to close collieries over many years. At the end of their journeys, what do our reporters think? Have they any hope? I met all sorts of people with world election who are concerned about what the future holds for them. And I think uh, listening to what is happening in the industry, unless somebody does something positive and, uh, towards the industry, I'm afraid that we'll probably see the old industry declining and going out to business forever. This makes me feel more determined to fight on. It makes me more determined not to, to fight on its right thing to do. The thing is, even at this stage now, although they've announced in October that we're closing in March, it's now January and we still don't know whether we're closing or not. We, do, we just don't know what we're doing. ITN headquarters, the early evening news with Carol Barnes. Three quarters of Britain's coal industry was wiped out this afternoon in one single announcement. 30,000 jobs, 31 pits accidents soon. Grim-faced British coal executives preparing to deliver the worst possible message on the future of the industry. While they spoke of massive job losses and pit closures on an unprecedented scale, thousands of miners throughout Britain waited to hear their fate. Initial personal reaction when I was told that we would be closing by the end of March was one of shock, disbelief. Uh, then it turned to anger because there's been a lot of good work done at this pit, you know, not just by myself, by everybody at the pit. I regard the whole situation as a very sad, very damaging, very distressing one. But I'm afraid there is absolutely no alternative. It is forced on us by the market. It may be an unfair market, an uneven playing field, but it is forced on us by the market. We have to react to that. We cannot sell our people, people a false future. 30,000 jobs are to be lost in the next five months, and 31 pits will cease production. Five pits exist tonight in the northeast, four to go, leaving just one. The number of pits in Yorkshire will be almost halved by the closure of 11 collieries. The same applies to the Nottingham Group, 13 now, but seven are to go. There are eight pits in the Midlands and the North West, six of them will be axed. Wales has four, and three are going, leaving just one. 